filming this on a Wednesday and it will go live on Sunday as usual and by Sunday I will have been to see my favourite musical in the theatre for the second time. What is my favourite musical? I'll give you a clue. On my own, pretending he's beside me. I'm just obsessed with Les Mis, okay? I am obsessed with it, I love it, it has my soul. Last November, I made a video about my favourite films and TV shows, and I asked you guys watching if there was anything you would like me to make a favourites list video about. Lots of you had suggestions, and I completely ignored all of them until now! Because <laughs> I'm a terrible person, sorry about that. Anyway, Ads from Ads Can't Sing mentioned that he would like to see me make a video about my favourite musical. So just eight months later, here it is! Just for you! Sorry about the wait. So we've established that Les Mis is my favourite musical, even though it makes me ugly cry. It's just so beautiful! <laughs> or maybe because it makes me ugly cry. Is that weird? Maybe that's weird. But what other musicals do I love? Well, I am an unashamed theatre nerd and I love most musicals, but the one that kickstarted the obsession was an absolute classic. The hills are alive with the sound of music. I'm a nun, get it? This is a cardigan. <laughs> yes, let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. I am deeply and unashamedly in love with the sound of music. I first saw that film when I was only around four or five years old and I just adored it. It has everything. Come on, singing nuns, kids wearing clothes made out of curtains, evil Nazis to boo at, Julie Andrews. I mean, you know, she's a ledge. And yes, it has some deeply, deeply cringy parts that I genuinely hate. Oh, Maria. Do you know when I first started loving you? Oh, cringe. Oh, I think I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. But it also has Climb Every Mountain and... Come on, guys, that is some inspirational shizzle right there. I love it so much that one of my dreams in life is to go to Salzburg and do a Sound of Music tour, and I don't care how sad that might make me. Seeing as I am much too poor to go jetting off to Salzburg though, there is another musical that is one of my absolute favourites and I probably could do a little tour of some of the locations for that one because that is set in merry old London town. Please sir, I want some more. More? Oliver will always have a very special place in my heart, not just because I first saw it when again I was only about five, maybe six years old and just fell in love with it, but because it is the first musical I ever starred in. Yes, when I was around 10 or 11 years old, my school decided that we were going to put on a production of Oliver and I was very, very excited because my life dream for the past like four years, five years up until that point, had been to play Nancy in Oliver. I've got to stay true just as long as he needs me. Unfortunately, this is where Oliver also is the cause of some slight trauma that I've never really gotten over. I was super excited about auditioning for the role of Nancy. I taught myself to talk and sing in a Mockney accent. I was all ready. I was going to go into that assembly hall, wow my teachers and secure that part. And then the teachers who were doing the casting of the play were like, thanks so much for everybody coming to audition. Uh, just a little heads up before we get started. Please nobody worry about trying to do any Cockney accents or anything like that. We'll teach you to do that once we've chosen who's going to have the part, okay? So just do it in your normal voice. Excellent, who's first? Now, as a young child, there are two things you should know about me. Number one, I listened to rules very carefully, so there was no way I was going to break what they had just told me to do. And number two, my natural voice was quite posh. I was really flummoxed by not being able to do the audition how I'd planned to do it, and therefore it came out very 
very stilted. It wasn't great. And then another girl auditioned and promptly said, Um, actually, Nancy wasn't the sort of person who would have been told what to do, so I'm going to do an accent anyway. As long as he needs me. Yeah, she got the part. I mean, I'm not bitter or anything. It's not like, you know, over 25 years later, I still think about it sometimes and get annoyed or anything. No, I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. It should have been me. I was a maid. Yes, I didn't have any singing to do in that entire musical. I was a maid. But let me tell you, my Mrs. Bedwin was spectacular. There is a young person, sir, at the back door, inquiring for you. She says she's come about Oliver. Yeah, that's exactly how I said those lines. It's not burnt into my brain through shame or anything. We've got that on video somewhere, but it's on VHS and will therefore never, ever, ever find its way onto YouTube. Thank God. The other musicals that I love most found their way into my life a little bit later than those first two. For example, when I was in my teens, I discovered, via my much cooler younger sister who found it first, Rent. 525,600 minutes. Mm -hmm. If your school choir didn't do Seasons of Love, were you even in a school choir? Rent completely blew my tiny mind when I first heard the soundtrack and actually read the plot synopsis of the show. Until that point, musicals had kind of always been a little bit of fun escapism for me. And suddenly, reading the plot of Rent and listening to the songs from it made me realise that musical theatre could tackle important social issues. It could challenge gender norms and it could depict relationships that were not just between straight women and men. It really opened my eyes to just how powerful musical theatre can actually be and how important representation is on the stage and that stayed with me forever. I still really want a no day but today tattoo, I just haven't quite decided where about my person. Also, whilst I was still in my teens, I discovered another musical that smashed gender norms and was just completely and utterly bonkers. Let's do the time up again! To this day, I cannot hear or say damn it without going jam it. Even if it's just in my head, thanks to the Rocky Horror Show, that is what I do. One of the most fun trips to the cinema I have ever ever had in my life was going to see a late night Halloween screening of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I dressed completely as magenta, everybody there was dressed up, everybody was singing, everybody was standing up and doing the dance moves and the highlight for me was during Hot Patootie, bless my soul, this guy in the front row who dressed quite normally stood up and just started to play an inflatable saxophone during the sax solo. It was just an awesome night full of people who just didn't care. They just wanted to have a fun time and there was no judgement, no weirdness. It was just a really freeing, lovely experience and I kind of want to go again. I would say that Les Mis and The Sound of Music, Oliver, Rent and The Rocky Horror Show probably make my top five musicals of all time. They are the ones that probably mean the most to me and have the most personal memories connected to them. But because I am, as I said at the start of this video, a huge musical theatre nerd, there are an awful lot of honourable mentions that I could make. For example, another musical that I discovered by going to see it in the West End in my teens was Blood Brothers. And I became completely and utterly obsessed with it. I still like to imagine that I am dramatic enough to play Mrs. Johnston. Mickey, no! Mickey, don't shoot any, please! He's your brother. You had a twin brother, but... I couldn't afford to keep the both of you, so I agreed to give one of you away. Oh, Mum! Why didn't you give me away, Mum? I could have been! I could have been him! No! And also, apparently, Mickey Johnston. I also really have to mention Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, which I have been to see at the theatre so many times I've actually lost count. 
Once Upon a Time, that probably would have made my top three. I think things just sort of evolve and you change your opinions as you get older, but it's still definitely in my top musicals of all time. And I can still tell you all of the colors of Joseph's coat. It was. <laughs> Red and yellow and green and brown and scarlet and black and ochre and peach and ruby and olive and violet and fawn and lilac and gold and chocolate and mauve and cream and crimson, silver and rose, azure and lemon and russet and grey and purple and white and pink and orange and blue. That was fun for you! I have to mention Half a Sixpence because that is another one of the films that made me fall in love with musicals as a genre when I was like four or five years old. Also made me fall in love with Tommy Steele. He was basically my first celebrity crush. I have to give an honourable mention to Sister Act, which is one of the most fun musicals I've ever been to see in the theatre. Seriously, I had jaw ache from laughing so much when I went to see that. I have to mention Hairspray, which I love for very similar reasons, it's just a lot of fun. I have to mention Phantom of the Opera, which is the only musical I've ever seen on Broadway. So far, it's a bit of a dream to go back. West Side Story, which also, very much like Les Mis, makes me ugly cry, and Evita, which in my teens, again, I was kind of obsessed with. Seriously, I just love musicals, I wish I lived in one. I'm not even joking, I made a video about that, it's up here if you want to watch it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, you can click on my floaty head if you'd like to subscribe, and let me know in the comments, are you a musicals fan? What's your favourite? I'm going to go and listen to some soundtracks. Speak to you all next Sunday. Bye!